Hey Pete here for Studio Live today. Now you like guitars, right? I like guitars. Today in this GarageBand iOS video, we're going to be recording electric and bass guitar using my Steinberg UR12 audio interface into my iPad here running GarageBand iOS. We've got two electric tracks. We've got a rhythm and a lead track and a bass guitar track. And we're gonna be recording all three of those in this video here today as part of my Complete A Song Challenge. So let's jump in and start recording some guitars. Let's go. Okay, so here we go, I've got everything I need. I've got my Les Paul, my Epiphone Les Paul guitar. I have a guitar cable here, which I will unwrap now. And I have a guitar pick. Never forget the guitar pick, always important. So now I'm going to plug in to the input here on the high Z, high Z input here on the front of my Steinberg UR12. I'm gonna plug the other end of my guitar cable, not surprisingly, into my guitar and that is ready to go. So what I need to do now is make sure that the input here, so I've got these guitar tracks recorded already, and well, I've got more guitar picks, and I wanna actually duplicate this guitar track. So this is my scratch guitar that I've recorded for the rhythm guitar part. I'm gonna tap on that, I'm gonna do duplicate, and if I can do it right, duplicate, I'll get another guitar track here. So I'm going to mute the original guitar, so I can play along with this new guitar part here. So now what I need to do is go into this guitar by tapping on the little amp box up here, tapping on the input at the top here, and making sure this is over on input number two. So my guitar here in this interface, the Steinberg UA12, is input two is the guitar, input one is the microphone preamp, so I wanna make sure that I'm on the guitar pre a preamp, the guitar input. So we're ready to go. I've got my clean combo there. The other thing I need to do, I need to be on a monitor. So I have plugged in here, I'll show you there. So I've got my quarter inch headphone jack there and my Sennheiser HD 280 headphones that I need to put on my face in order to actually hear the recording because I'm gonna do multi-track recording here and anytime you're doing multi-track recording, as I lose my pick, you're going to need to be able to hear what's being played back but you don't want that to be playing out loud because that's gonna be picked up. Not so much when you're recording guitar but when you're recording vocals, it is gonna pick that up. So that is my setup, I'm plugged in here. I've set up my uh, amp here, my amp settings here. Now the clean combo is what I've got because if you watched some of the earlier videos, that's what I've used. That may change down the track, but I'm gonna dial in the exact same settings I have there for now to play the track. And then when we get to the mixing phase, if we need to do some tweaking, we will do that then. Okay, so here we are in our iPad and we're in GarageBand here, ready to retrack these guitars. So we're gonna be doing our rhythm guitar, our lead guitar, our bass in this video. I'm connected as we saw just before with my Les Paul guitar here and I don't have a channel selected, so we're not hearing that, but I'm going to duplicate this track, hit duplicate, and this is our rhythm guitar. So let's start renaming our tracks here. We're going to rename this one and delete that. So let's just have these as T in front for these are our tracked guitars, and we're gonna go Git and R for rhythm. We've got monitor on, but we're in input one, and on our Steinberg UR12 interface down here, uh, input one is our mic preamp and input two is our guitar, so. That is much better, we are ready to record. So we're gonna go back to here. Now, what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna leave on, let's solo out these uh, intro tracks here. But what I wanna do, so that I don't sort of lose my spot and I'm re-recording a lot of this stuff, the acoustic guitar down here is the one that goes all the way through and is a reasonably good scratch recording. So I'm gonna use that as my basis of this track. So as we track through, it's gonna sound like this. So we've got that one soloed now, we've got the intro soloed and all that's left to do is to solo our guitar. And now if we play it back, then we can actually then we can actually hear what we're playing as we go along without having all of that other noise and the vocals and everything. So uh, this is what we're going to do. And then once we have this rhythm guitar down, we'll probably just use the rhythm guitar to play our, our lead guitar part over the top. So let us line this up now and hit record 
and record a take, and hopefully it's a one-take wonder, but let's not get too excited. Let's uh, set up and go now. Okay, so not too bad. I don't know why I'm leaning down. I think it's because you're chopping off my head. Um, so we have that track down now. Let's go back here and make sure it's looking all okay. It looks all right there. So you will have noticed that I varied that up a little bit and the chords were not actually always matching exactly what the acoustic guitar was doing. We're going to record the acoustic afterwards and play around and balance a little bit to make sure it's all okay in the end. So there may be some overdubs that we need here, which we'll do down the track, but what I wanted to do now is just get down some nice, clean, complete guitar tracks here. There were no major mistakes there, so I'm gonna go with it for now. We're gonna move on and let's go with some lead guitar. Okay, so you might recall that here is our scratch lead guitar track. I'm using this rich harmonics here. So let's just play a little bit of this as it sounds in the mix at the moment. We'll go back here. All right, that's gonna sound good once we obviously boost the volume and re-record this track. So we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna tap here, we're gonna duplicate. And now we're going to rename just to make sure that we're ready with what we're doing here. Okay, so let's go in and make sure this is all set up properly so we can actually hear what we're doing. So once again, our input's on input one. If we change that to two, we're good to go. And you can hear the guitar sound is very different. I'm gonna use my Les Paul again. So I'm not gonna go and grab a different guitar. Um, and it's, it's gonna be a similar sort of sound, but we're using a different amp here, so we are gonna get a different sort of sound. Now I'm gonna use the back pickup again for this one as well. And again, we can play around with the sound later, but I wanna get the sound about right, and I kinda like this rich harmonics preset that we have going on here. So, let's go back, now that we know that that is all working, we're gonna mute out our original uh, lead guitar track. So we're going to play along with the rhythm guitar and the acoustic guitar here now uh, and this intro part. So this is the beauty part of GarageBand is we can we don't have to play along with the whole track. We can play along with whatever we want and I don't have a drum beat. What I'm wishing I had done now in hindsight is done the drums first because and I'll probably do those next but I don't have a drum beat to play to. I'm playing to a click track and I'd probably get a better vibe and a better feel if I was playing guitars to a drum beat. So next time around get that drum beat down first. In fact Let's put our drums on and just put those at a lower volume. All right, I'll put those on just so that we've got a little bit of additional help here with this lead guitar track. So we'll come back here, not to the very start. We'll give ourselves a bit of lead in. Quick uh, tuning, make sure we're... Especially for lead guitar parts, you need to make sure you are in tune because it does stand out. If you have a wrong note, they go, not good. All right, let's hit record and see what we can do with this one. Okay, once again, not terrible, not bad, not uh, 
Okay, it's good. I need to stop being the negative. Let's go good with that. There was a little bit at the end there where I didn't really like what I played, and I'm probably going to have to redo, but we've got a decent signal all the way through. You might have heard that I was experimenting with a few different ideas as we went through that time, and I was doing that mainly in parts where I probably aren't going to have, probably not going to have this guitar playing, um, and that's because it's really easy to remove those parts after the fact. So if you want to just try something when you're doing this and there's a vacant part, just try something. You might find a nice little noodly bit that's going to work well in your track. Anyway, what I want to do, this is probably a good opportunity to show you what we can do here in terms of punching into a track because there was a bit here at the end that I didn't really like. In fact, I may re-record this whole back section. I'll just find the part that I'm talking about and show you what I think didn't quite work. Yeah, there it is. So, in fact, the rest of it's actually pretty good. So, we really only need to sort of punch in from about here and... Okay, so here we are, we're at the point where we can cut back in. So I'm gonna hit the record, it'll give me four counts and then we'll be recording. So I'm actually my picks ready and hit the button and we'll be going on one, two, three, four. Okay, I forgot that we were so close to the end there. So we'll delete that, we'll hit record again and try this one one more time. Okay, that's not bad. What we'll now do is we'll play these together and see how this comes together because sometimes you can get some little clicks and pops in between when you're tracking like this and you're, you're punching in. So let's play it back. So there you can hear it was a little bit, so we can just move this. Oh, yep, we wanna do that, but we don't wanna do that first. We'll just go, uh, not stop. We'll go undo and we'll bring this one closer to the attack of that note like that, and this one, so it has the sustain of the previous note, and now, when we play these back, we should find... So it does cut off a little bit there, and it's gonna be more pronounced right now, but once we put this in the mix, it's going to sound pretty good. So I'm gonna leave that as it is now. Let's move on to the bass guitar. Okay, so my iPad is telling me that it doesn't want to record its screen, so I've come in a little bit closer here. I have my bass guitar. I don't need a pick because I'm playing bass. So we're going to have to go old school here. We don't have time to wait around for technology and Apple iOS 11 problems that are going to fail us here. So we're going to continue on with this. You may not have seen what I was demonstrating here in a whole lot of detail for the guitars, but we're going to do the same thing for the bass here anyway. We're going to grab our bass guitar. We're going to tap and not do that, we're not gonna delete. We're going to tap and duplicate, and then we'll solo this so that we can actually hear our bass guitar, turn on our, our monitoring, but then do this final thing, which is come in here, set our input gain, not input gain, input channel to input two. And then, Knock your camera and then <laughs> grab your guitar lead and actually plug in. There's that great sound, you know that sounds so well. Plug in your bass and then you can actually play some bass guitar. So we're going to use the classic stack here, which we already had set up. We're going to keep it at that for now. Uh, let us turn up the volume on this bass. And get rid of the app notification there. Make sure that we're getting enough level through here because with a bass guitar and down here on my Steinberg UR12, let's see if I can lift it up without disconnecting everything, um, I'm gonna dial in a little bit more here on the input because what uh, a bass guitar is not gonna have quite as much level. Okay, that's... That's going to be all right. It's sounding very loud at the moment because I have the output all the way up. But as long as I'm not clipping on the peak light as I showed you before, then we're going to be all good. Make sure that we're in tune. Yep, we're fine. 
Uh, and we're in drop D on the base here again. So once again, sorry for my failing technology, but we're gonna continue and persist with this. So we'll find our spot here. And once again, let's just try and track this through and do one take and hopefully we can get a decent sound. Okay, so I'm going with that for now. You might have heard there was a little part in there where, there was a part there where I kind of stopped and didn't play too well, but it was one of the sort of bass parts that isn't as prominent, so I'm gonna leave it in there for now and we may do some copying pasting. I know I said I don't do a lot of copying and pasting, but I do a little bit of copying and pasting because sometimes you just need to. And when it's a bass part, not the bass doesn't matter. If you're a bass player, sorry, you do matter, but it doesn't always have to be perfect. And that is gonna do it for this GarageBand iOS video. We ran into a few hurdles here. We had a few takes and mistakes along the way, but we have our three electric guitar tracks here. We've got our rhythm, our lead, and our bass guitar. So when we return, we'll be getting some drums in here. We'll be doing some acoustic guitars. We'll be making sure the pianos and any other instruments are tracked. And then we'll be getting onto our vocals. So we're halfway through the month here and we're halfway through our challenge. So it's time to start trying tracking these instruments. Thanks again for watching and for all of your feedback. I've been getting a lot of great comments here. I've put out a video where I asked you if you like the intro and most people are saying they do like the intro. We didn't look at it in this video, but jump back if you want to find out all about what we're talking about there with the intro. But most people seem to be in favor of keeping it in some form or another. Um, we've also had some comments around what I should be doing with guitars, with some other instruments. We need to bring some drums in there. We had a couple of people telling me about the drums and what their ideas were for that. So as we go through this, funnily enough, the guitars, not many people have many comments on. So hopefully that means the guitars are sounding good. But as we get to the other instruments, your input and your feedback is super important. So keep that coming as we go through this series and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.